Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Jason Weber. I'm uh, President and CEO of Silver North Resources, and I'm here to present our company, uh, a silver-focused uh, explorer, uh, focused right now on the Yukon Territory. Um, we have two projects uh, that we're uh, active on uh, at the moment, uh, one being our Haldane project, which is in the historic Keno Hill District in the Yukon Territory. Uh, we recently announced a discovery there of uh, just over 300 grams per ton silver over a, a width, true width of 8.7 meters. Followed that up with some really high grade uh, intersections uh, from uh, the same vein system. We're also working in the southern part of the territory, right at the BC Yukon border. Uh, we have a project uh, called TIM, which we have optioned to Coor Mining. Coor is uh, earning uh, up to an 80% interest in that project by taking it to a uh, positive decision to mine. Um, it's in the same host rocks as their silver tip deposit 19 kilometers to the south so we feel we're kind of uniquely positioned here we have two yukon projects both have road access they're high grade silver targets and we're working either with or right next to uh, some of the biggest silver producers uh, in north america we're bullish on silver we um really feel that there's kind of a coming together potentially here of two kind of mega trends. We look at what's happening geopolitically and economically, and we think that bodes very well for precious metals. But I think what is even more uh, encouraging for us is just the, the explosive growth in silver demand, largely due to the, the push for green electrification. Uh, silver is such a big part of uh, EVs, really big part of solar panel uh, production. And even some of the new solar panel technologies that are starting to take over, they actually use more silver than, than what solar panel production has been using uh, up till now. So we really see silver uh, as a, a somewhat critical metal in, uh, in the precious metal space. And I think this is what really drives us for our focus on silver uh, and exploring for it uh, in uh, Northern Canada. As I said, our two projects are both road accessible, uh, starting with Haldane in the historic Keno Hill District. Uh, we've got recent discoveries here. This is a over a hundred year old uh, mining district. Dates back to the early 1900s when silver was originally discovered here. Yet we're finding brand new, uh, previously unknown silver vein mineralization. Uh, we've got uh, blind discoveries. We took a holistic approach to this property when we took it on. We felt that there were new discoveries to be made in this part of the district. And we were able to prove that true. And with almost 12 kilometers of cumulative vein strike to explore. So if you take all the veins that we currently know of, and sort of added them all up, we'd have over 12 kilometers uh, of expiration, vein expiration to undertake. There's only been 28 holes to drilled ever on this property from surface. And that really only covers about four to 600 meters of that 12 kilometers. So excellent p potential to build on what we've accomplished so far. This is just a Google Earth image of, of the Kino District uh, and our land holdings at the, uh, the west side of it. Uh, you can see the yellow uh, road that passes through there. That's the Silver Trail Highway. Uh, an offshoot goes off to the north to the Eagle Gold Mine. And you can see Kino Cities at the eastern uh, terminus of that highway. And you can see some of the mines currently in production, Birmingham, uh, Flame and Moth, and then some of the old, uh, the old targets that uh, have been mined out uh, in this history of this project or this area. Uh, power right along the road, uh, just been upgraded in the last few years. Uh, and that services both Eagle and the Kino mines. So this is uh, just a, a shot of the, uh, the landholders in the district. Uh, the light green is, uh, is Hecla. They recently purchased Alexco Resources and uh, finalized that in 2022. Um, there are direct neighbor, you can see the Eagle land position to the north, uh, with two operating gold mines, uh, a number of exploration projects in the area, both silver and gold. Uh, this is a really busy area. There's lots going on. And that's one of the things we really like about this. And, and when we embarked on this project, we didn't really understand this to the fullest, but this district was known for its silver for a hundred years. Uh, in the last 
10 to 15, there have been a number of gold deposits that have been discovered. Eagles now in production, our neighbor Banyan Gold's defined over 6 million ounces in resources there. And we believe, and many others do as well, that these, these, uh, these two systems are actually genetically linked. So a dynamic region, host to many deposits, and we feel room for, for, for more discoveries. This is a geology map of the Kino district. Uh, the important unit there when you're looking for silver is the blue gray unit. That's called the Kino Hill basal quartzite. That unit hosts 90% or more of all the silver vein deposits in the district. So you wanna have that if you're gonna look for these styles of veins. Uh, and we do have a good exposure of that uh, on the Haldane property. What's different from Haldane, and I think this is what one of the reasons that allows us to make brand new discoveries 100 years after the district has uh, got its start, is the fact that uh, that um, most of the district has been glaciated. So you've you've actually taken uh, the weathered material, the uh, as these veins are exposed to water and, and oxygen. Uh, the sulfide minerals uh, degrade, and you're often left with orangey, messy looking rocks on surface that may or may not have a strong silver lead signature to them. That was all scraped away by the glaciers that allowed the old timers to come in the early 1900s and find exposed galena veins that were high in silver right on surface. At Haldane, we didn't see that glaciation. The glaciers stopped right basically the property boundary. So we still see that weathered material on surface and we have to look below that to find the good sulfide veins. And we've done that twice now to, to make new uh, silver discoveries here. Uh, the main discovery is called West Fault. It's in the kind of the core of the property. There's a number of vein uh, faults exposed in this area. And through the discovery of the West Fault mineralization, we actually have upgraded all the other fault systems uh, parallel to it in the district because now we know that when you get down below the weathered surface, you can find high grade vein mineralization. And, and our West Fault discovery was 8.7 meters true width of 311 grams per ton silver. And subsequent to that, we followed it up with three meters of um, 1,315 grams per ton silver. So we're getting high grades, we're getting nice widths, very much mineable widths. And we now have an understanding that a vein exposure on surface that doesn't have silver or high grade silver with it doesn't mean that's not a productive vein. So it's we've we've upgraded all the targets in the area. And on this map, you can see there's a parallel uh, uh, vein that we've called Maine and Maine South. That's a high priority target for us. We're focused on the West Fault right now. We've identified it over a 100 by 90 meter area. We figure we've got the Southwest dip to the high grade mineralization identified and our next phases of drilling will be to step out uh, down dip and, and a long strike on that. This is a photograph of the, the Bighorn Valley, which hosts the area where we do most of our work, the West Fault uh, discovery. Uh, the drill pads high up on the hillside there, we're actually hitting mineralization at about the level of the valley floor. So it's, uh, even though we're, are, we're intersecting mineralization 225 to 250 meters depth, uh, accessing it from the valley floor, it's just a slight decline. To the uh, uh, further back in the photo, the Bighorn area, that's another area where we identified through soil geochemistry, a new target, uh, we went, drilled one hole into it, had 125 grams per ton silver over a couple meters, not ore grade. But in chatting with the, the team at Hecla and our ne next door neighbor here, who's mining these types of veins, that's really a significant intersection. Uh, and their direct quote is, you could be 50 meters from high grade mineralization there. That's worth following up. And then just a couple other um, notes on this photo, Johnson and, and Middlecoff areas. Those were high grade um, uh, zones that were, uh, we did have a very little bit of valley glaciation here that came part way up the valley, was able to uncover some of these uh, uh, sulfide minerals uh, that the old timers were able to go in and do some small scale mining on, but right only in the, in the very valley floor. Um, as soon as they went into the mountain, they, they ran into weathered material. So um, it's really um, 
uh, a matter of getting deeper on, on some of these systems here. So this is just a, a plan map of the uh, the drilling at West Fault. As I, I said, we've identified over 100 meter by 90 meter area. It hangs together fairly nicely. And uh, our one of our, our, our next goals is to drill one of these holes long through the West Fault into the main. And you can see on the right hand side, there's the cross section with the, the West Fault and Main Fault on it. And we haven't drilled uh, through both of those. And West Fault doesn't have any mineralization on surface. There's no uh, silver um, uh, exposure on surface, main fault does. So to us, that's a very, very high priority target. This is what it looks like on surface, just to give you an idea of some of the grades that we're, we're drilling. And you can see that relationship between the West Fault and the, and the parallel uh, main fault to uh, just a few hundred meters over. This is the Bighorn Zone. This is uh, this is the one hole we've one and only hole into this target. That was the Geochem target that we drilled. It actually had a 63 gram per ton soil uh, silver and soil sample on surface over percent lead. Obviously, uh, uh, very interesting. Something we wanted to test. We actually didn't get very much of a response from it in uh, in drilling, but we did hit, as I mentioned earlier, a um, a Galenus valerate uh, quartz siderite vein, which is indicative of this style of mineralization in the district uh, over a few meters that uh, is uh, now thought to be extremely um, prospective. So this is another area that uh, we'd go back into this year, uh, drill a couple holes. We've identified the, the vein fault now over almost 600 meters on surface and in drilling. Uh, so lots of room uh, to explore along this vein system. The other project we have, uh, silver project we have in the Yukon Territory is called TIM. It's in the, uh, the silver tip, midway silver tip area. Uh, our partner on this is CORE. Uh, they're earning into the project by funding uh, exploration and uh, feasibility can get them to uh, an 80% uh, interest in the project. It's about 19 kilometers from their, uh, their silver tip mine project. Uh, CORE has been really successful in the last few years adding silver resource ounces. Um, in fact, their first year of drilling where they focused just on trying to expand the deposit, they didn't get that done in the first year. They never found the bounds of it. Uh, great problem to have. They uh, are now, uh, well, have optioned this and they're now trying to take what they've learned at exploring at Silvertip and trying to uh, apply that to other uh, CRD type silver systems uh, in, in the region. Ours being the, the first and, and only one to date that they, they've optioned. So under our agreement with them, they'll fund uh, a $700,000 drill program this year, slated to start in um, June. Um, the planning for that's still underway. Uh, Coors the operator, so I'm, I'm kind of relying on them for information on, on when the program starts and what it exactly looks like. I'm, I'm told I'll have that uh, sometime after PDAC here, so probably mid-March. Mid the property is road accessible. You actually come in off the uh, the Silver Tip Mine access road in, in British Columbia and you come just drive back up the road into the Yukon to get into uh, the area where we're working. There was uh, some trenching that was done here uh, in the 1980s, actually about the same type, same time that Silver Tip Midway was discovered. Uh, the story goes, and I can't verify it, but the story goes that there was the Tim target and there was Silver Tip Midway. They chose to drill at Midway, made the discovery and never looked back. It's a convenient story, I guess, if, uh, if you're promoting the next uh, silver target in the district. But what they did do is they, they did a bunch of trenches, uh, got a couple, uh, I think it's 1,200 meters of, of strike where they've identified um, um, a horizon of silver mineralization. Again, heavily weathered. Uh, when they uh, took the uh, uh, cat to it and, and exposed it in the 1980s, um, they were able to get some nice high-grade uh, mineralization, including about 350 grams silver over almost four meters. Uh, some high-grade grabs from uh, in the area. Uh, anywhere, if you can find a little bit of galena, if you sample that, that's where all the silver is. Uh, it's just a matter of finding that, that remnant uh, sulfide. Um, last year, a couple of years ago, Coeur went back in, uh, reopened one of these trenches, and they got 
four meters of almost 470 grams per ton silver. So nice high grade target, uh, looks identical to what they're, they're exploring and uh, had been mining at, at Silvertip. So that'll be an exciting project for us, uh, siting drill program, hopefully starting in, in June of, uh, of this year. So I think uh, just to summarize, uh, you know, we look at uh, a unique opportunity in, in the Yukon where we have two discovery stage projects. Uh, you can argue that we've already made the discovery at, at Haldane and we just need to build that out to show it has the potential for 15, 20, 25 million ounces or, or even more. Um, and then part, and you know, being next door to Hecla, not a bad thing. And then to be partnered with Coor at Tim, have them funding uh, that exploration. I think it puts us in not only a great position for uh, news flow throughout the year here, but also you know to make a to make a discovery. And of course, in this market, it's tough. Uh, but probably the best way for us to value add value to the company is to make a, a discovery. So that, that's what we aim to do. Uh, just our. Um, our uh, little bit of inf info on, on the company share price. Uh, we just have uh, under 37 million shares outstanding, so good tight share structure. And um, we've got uh, about 400,000 in flow through set aside for for work this summer. We, we'd need a little bit more to do a big drill program at Haldane, but I think for now where the share price is, we're gonna bide that uh, bide our time, see what happens with uh, drilling at, at Tim. And, and then uh, we do have the ability to drill late into the year at Haldane. In fact, our discovery at West Fault was, uh, that hole was drilled in November. Uh, so we do have the ability to work late into the year. Uh, I think I'll leave it at that. Um, if there's any questions, I'd be happy to, to answer any.